SMP 500 is much easier to label as you can see I've decided to keep the um, labeling towards the extension basically counting uh, the rise the bull market which actually started in 1930s to label it basically as an impulse with an extension within this super cycle free now the point uh, point is that after that of course of uh, this topped out at basically the dot com bubble followed by an a wave and then the rise in the B wave going higher than the start of A and then of course dropping in 2008 as you can see causing this expanded flat and super cycle purple four right here now now obviously with the Fibonacci extensions I've measured three with four and basically looking at 61.8 100% 161.8 now 61.8 no major retracement on it yeah so we're gonna move on move on 100% definitely reaction right here now the point is that we do have an extension here in free basically 161 150 uh, 50% caused by this wave 1 and 2 so therefore the extension in free yeah is indeed valid so it's not it's not just like it uh, doesn't look exactly like Dow Jones that's the point so everything kind of uh, tends to line up a little bit better okay so 100% we kept on going so this bull market kept on going with obviously we have an extension within this cycle wave 5 as you can clearly see so therefore our next view will be basically this important FIBS 161.8 150% of super cycles 3 and 4 and this is exactly what we're gonna go over I'm gonna zoom in yeah so basically the the theory is we have one two three uh, wave third wave sorry cycle wave three and then cycle wave four in the retracement and then the extension and the Fibonacci basically is is telling us the following thing by measuring three and four we have 100% here close to the 261.8 of one and two and also we have 150% right there so simply put 2900 is to be watched yeah I'm gonna zoom in for us to see what we could uh, see there yeah so now following up right here as I said Dow Jones did not create that new law although however S&P 500 you can you can clearly see that we went on the Dow side there yeah so we have a W X Y in a combination obviously in a in a complex uh, corrective structure now following following uh, you know right after that we started basically going on the upside with uh, first primary wave second wave correction and then of course we have this overlap yeah so as you can uh, as you may have noticed of course from the course explanations we cannot label this as a free so we are in an extension in this basically free that's what the rules tell us yeah when this primary free we have an extension in it now the, the way I'm labeling it is basically as a one two three four and the extension in, in the intermediate green five happening right here so this leaves us basically with this piece for us to label yeah so I'm gonna zoom in and be much more uh, precise on, on this so as I said this is primary one with um, with the waves inside at one two three four retracement five giving us basically the divergence and then basically dropping out in intermediate ABC correcting basically um, wave one so wave two is marked right here now how how I'm labeling this rise is basically as a one two three four five within the channel and notice that the channel was breached here which is an excellent sign when looking for upcoming divergences and basically finalizing a uh, way because this is basically so-called a spin-off top yeah 
so anyway not sure that it's gonna go like that I was pretty fast with the mouse but <laughs> anyway you get the picture so let's let's firstly analyze this uh, the Fibonacci extensions yeah from cycle wave 3 and 4 our view is 100% because 61.8 we did have reaction here okay but this only caused the support for the 100% target yeah so 3 and 4 because 3 basically the cycle wave 3 already had the extension 161.8 so it's only normal for this cycle wave 5 to end somewhere around 100% should it go however at the 161.8 we will we will know later on I mean we will be able to establish that or possibly establish that later for now I'm just gonna label what I have in front of me so I'm labeling 1 2 with an extension basically free right here 161.8 now the reason why I'm not labeling 1 2 and then 1 2 3 4 is because if we basically try to label this as 1 2 3 we will have a problem with this 3 because it's only 61.8 not 100% of 3 and 4 therefore I will I, I decided to label the extension in the fifth of fifth in the S&P 500 therefore this obviously explains the massive rally that US indices uh, are are facing including Nasdaq including Dow Jones and um, all else yeah so let's move on a little bit now what we what we actually see here is basically first wave second wave corrective obviously as you can see this this channel borders are working nicely yeah so as for the fibs uh, let's say from from one normally in this type of extension from one and two I would be looking at this 261.8 as the basically possible end of wave uh, three. Now, as for the um, as for the basically for the intermediate to um, to basically link with that uh, 261.8 on the primary scale, uh, I will I will of course look into three four to cause an extension in wave uh, five. Yeah, basically intermediate green five. This wave right here okay so basically to line up with a 150 percent or 161.8 but obviously 100 percent somewhere around there i i believe that um, i mean this is a vibration level not only that we have golden ratio golden ratio golden ratio okay so it's an important it's an important um, level right here not to mention that if we go even even closer yeah if we go even closer we'll see one two and then a channeling in wave three which is pretty pretty nice and pretty normal uh, happens all the time yeah so ABC uh, normal correction basically in wave four my uh, minor four yeah so from three and four another golden ratio right there yeah so how close can we go yeah should we go any closer let's do it all right so as I said from this three and four yeah what we need to do is we're left off with this piece right here and as you can see the channel is breaching yeah what's happening yeah no uh, no volumes here not basically no the volumes are not dropping by the way this is not a volume indicator this is a um, this is called Elliott wave oscillator I'm basically using it not for uh, volume recognition or something like that I'm just using it for to possibly confirm my divergences or start or end of waves yeah there is a way to a specific way to use this I'm not gonna go through this basically during my live sessions or webinars or private sessions um, I, I, I can go over these things I mean I usually do anyhow what I want to say is basically this move right here yeah we can clearly see that it's quite aggressive and um, this is not normal it's like price action is being drawn towards this like a magnet yeah before it gets the hammer before it could get the hammer yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't believe just everything I say but anyhow the point is that many fibs are aligning here yeah many fibs are aligning here so this levels 
I mean, these labels would would be watched closely for possible reactions. Now, if I even go if I go even closer to that, yeah, we can actually see from from minor four we started basically with uh, minute one two and then extension in minute three this three with an extension in minuet three, yeah. So therefore we have one two minuet and then one two sub minuet sub minuet three sub minuet four and then extension in in micro <laughs> uh, wave three. So you can see how powerful this. Uh, this strategy can be, I mean, this this concept Elliott wave. I'm pretty, I'm pretty amazed, and it's it can actually become a, a a bit addictive at one point when you're actually starting to notice things, and uh, when you notice that things are going the way you say. So anyway, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a bit it's a bit it's it's a good tool to use, I would say. So we've we've basically finalized this in ending diagonal. This uh, minute free. And right after that, we broke through the channel, which is pretty normal, by the way, for a wave four, yeah, and on, under under certain points. But anyhow, the point is that we went on the upside again, yeah, in wave one, it's very powerful, and starting basically another rally, yeah. Just like I said, when you when you think that the market is 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 retracing, there you go, happens again, right? As I said, price action is like being drawn like a magnet towards this golden ratio levels. So we went on the upside with one, two minuet black and then sub minuets extension one, two, three, four, and then an extension in fifth wave as well in this sub minuet and just basically barely, I mean, waiting to complete this so we can have a retracement before we go again. Yeah, it's like people are buying the dips. Now notice on the on the downstairs here, right? I mean, we do have a possible divergence coming, and as, as I said, that's at at end of wave fives, uh, usually divergences uh, take place. Yeah, this is a bearish divergence. Yeah, price action. I mean, um, this this oscillator is uh, dropping while a new all-time high is created. Yeah, so let's let's get even closer and see how how close can we go, right? And as you can as you can see that we either have one, two, three, four, and then this being a limited five. Although, however, in this type of of structure, even if I mean we could have this. I mean this being A, B, C, one, two, and then some sort of ending diagonal. Not sure about that yet. Okay, we'll be we'll need to watch this. But for now. I would actually say, because of this divergence, I would say that this wave ca wave five could be coming to an end very very soon, yeah. And let's say we would want to measure all this, uh, yeah. We have basically wave one and two. We have a projection here, 200%, 261.8. Now, of course, our main um, view focus would be 261.8 as it is the golden ratio. So what I will do is I will use the Fibonacci extensions to basically see from the top towards the bottom, yeah, to see my divergences to sorry the um, fib level Fibonacci ratios and golden ratios, yeah, for us to possibly spot a divergence at key levels. Notice that I have my hammer here. I mean, I'm just waiting for, um, I mean, as any, any Elliottians, usually, you know, it requires a bit of patience because all the pieces to the puzzle need to connect. Yeah. So point is that what I'm uh, personally, what I'm, uh, what I'm seeing is a possible upcoming contraction. And for this, I'm also going to explain to you later on with uh, with uh, basically with the VIX CBOE volatility index, which measures the volatility and fear and greed, um, you know, basically on the S&P 500. But until then, let's finish up basically with with this. So we have basically a new all-time high um, being created while the volumes are uh, indeed dropping here. Yeah. So this will only mean. This will only mean one thing. Now, if we would want to be 
super, I mean, very precise, let's say, for instance, yeah, we could do, uh, we could do the following thing. Now, we could measure wave 3 with its retracement wave 4, yeah, and possibly see 200% uh, percent as the actual um, stop, yeah, I mean, the end of subminuet wave 5 and then obviously subminuet wave 3. So what we'll do is measuring the entire minuet 3 with its retracement wave 4 now. For that retracement, obviously, I'm going to use the norm of Fibonacci just to put it here at 200%, the possible end of it, yeah, and to see basically the key levels of uh, typical for a wave 4. Now, should it be 23.6? There we go, we have a 61.8 exactly at, you know, close to 260, 261.8. If we're going to move it even lower to 38.2, there you go, golden ratios aligning right there. Yeah, so we will, we will see what's next, but short term, let's say short term wise, this is really insignificant compared to, I mean, because the view is on the downside. So my, my personal view is on the downside, so I would expect this. It, as soon as I see some sort of contraction here and then looking closely towards uh, towards another, uh, I mean, final, possible final rally, uh, would, it will be, it, it will get interesting. That's what I can say. Yeah. Um, now, moving on. CBOE VIX volatility index. This is basically a, um, an index which measures the fear and greed. Yeah, and I'm going to explain to you just, I mean, keep, I'm going to keep it simple just for you to understand. Basically, on the downside, it basically when, when, the, when the price action, basically, this is not a price action, it's an index, but anyway, when it's going down, people are being like complacent. Yeah, many rallies, they buy, uh, they buy the S&P stocks, etc. you know. So they're, they're pretty complacent, they're pretty confident in what's, what's happening, uh, basically, um, Tomorrow, uh, they, they think that tomorrow is, is going to be exactly like yesterday and so on, yeah? So it's, it's a complacency um, type of sentiment that's, that, that's occurring. So people are being confident, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying. So notice what happened here. Basically, when we hit the lowest point in 1994, then we had a spike, yeah? And then, of course, something broke loose, yeah? And then we have basically the dot com sentiment followed of course by you know you know what happened in the in 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 two thousands yeah and then people were starting starting to basically buy again yeah so we have basically fear and greed yeah this is basically what happened now when people you know in uh, let's say two thousand two thousand five this again uh, let's, sorry, 2007, this again dropped to a lowest point and it started rising. Yeah, people were becoming too, uh, people were, had fear. They no longer bought because the market was going down. Yeah, so this is basically, basically the um, underneath behind this uh, VIX index. Right after that, yeah, in time, of course, we went we went on the downside with this uh, index and S&P 500 and uh, Dow Jones and everything went sky high, had that, uh, you know, this this extraordinary rise, yeah, from there. And, you know, from, let's say, from 2000, uh, 2009, we, we, we started like, a, we continued the bull market, but we started a very aggressive bull market, yeah. So it's kind of not so normal, if I would say. So we had an extension in the wave uh, in the wave five. Now notice here, I drew a channel, and we hit another low, right here. I mean the lowest low from all uh, from all like 2000 and 2008. So indeed, this volatility index is possibly showing that we could go on the upside again with this, and God only knows what will happen. Yeah, the only thing the only thing that I know is that by looking at the charts this is um, a bit scary yeah so anyway let's move on this is this is basically a long longer term view projection so let's move on to uh, dollar index